In today's episode, we're talking about the last year and how we can move on. How can we welcome the new year and how can we set our intentions in a way that allows us to learn lessons from the last year, celebrate what we achieved and set our mind, our targets for this year. Let's find out. Welcome, welcome. This is Girl Khan, your money mindset expert, and we are in the new year. Can you imagine the last year just seems to have flown by? I, I It seems like a blink of an eye. It came and went. It was Christmas one minute and then it was Christmas again. That's how quick it went. And I, I took some time before I did this episode on purpose because I wanted to mull over what happened last year with me and my personal life and what I've achieved, what I didn't achieve, you know, how it benefited me, what I learned from it. Now, 2022 was a challenging year for me personally. It Because it was challenging year in my personal life, because of, you know, various incidents that happened to me, my both my children, you know, the end of it, um, an incident occurred with my, well, my child, and so professionally, I wasn't in the right state of mind as such, because of mo- most of my focus was being spent on my family and my personal life. Yet, I sit here and I look back at 2022 with a sense of achievement that surprised even me. I learned so much from this year maybe not as much professionally and I didn't advance as much professionally in terms of my various businesses that I had to you know some ups and downs and some other business apart from my coaching along with my my property business as well but the amount of growth that I did as a person in 2022 has been phenomenal and that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today and I want you to really have Give yourself the space and time to look at your, uh, you know, entire year and don't base it, don't base the achievements on uh, the amount of money in your bank account or, you know, are you still, are you in a relationship now or how many kids you have or, I don't know, the materialistic, you know, yardstick that we normally have, you know, that if, if I have this, then I was successful. If I did this, I was successful. If this happened in my life, then I've achieved something. I don't want you to measure your life success based on these external factors. I want you to really look within you and see what happened and how, you know, what instance occurred and what random curveballs were, you know, came at you in your way and how you dealt with it, good or bad. And if it was, if your behavior was not up to your standard or fell short of what you expected of yourself, how did you learn from it? What did you achieve from it? What did you, how did you grow from that incident? I think this is really important. Too many people talk about, let's celebrate our successes and, you know, and the success in terms of, you know, for them means how, you know, how many clients did you get and how, you know, how did you achieve this and that? I want you to grow as a holistic person. So people listening to this podcast are, I believe, to, you know, who are similar to me. So you would be very, very spiritual. You would want to grow every single year. Yes, of course, we, this is a money mindset podcast. Of course, you want to grow financially. And I encourage every single person to grow financially. But if that's your sole purpose in life, then you're going to live a very empty life. And I don't believe that people who listen to my podcast or, you know, who listen to this particular podcast are that shallow. I believe every single one who's listening to me right now wants to achieve those millions and billions and trillions. How, why not? Well, you know, why wouldn't you set your targets high? But there is a greater, you know, greater sense of achievement in terms of growing into the person who becomes a millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire, whatever your target is, right? It's not necessarily the monetary goal. It's who you become in order to achieve that. And that is the main uh, success. Um, um, you know, I think that the, 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 the main way to gauge success. So when I look upon my life in the past year, financially, 
it wasn't a bad year. It wasn't a great year. It was very similar to 2021. So I didn't grow financially. I did have some mishaps and a few other things. And so, and so in terms of my net worth, probably have, it was, it's probably not been a great year in terms of my net worth because overall me, my investments did, um, didn't do too well. But I think that seems to be the most major, majority of the people, um, you know, 2022 closed on most investments not doing very well and but then if you're investing and if you're investing properly then you're investing for the long for the long term and therefore overall you know you just sit tight and you just you know weather the storms so i i don't want to look upon 2022 through you know financial glasses and see how how much money i made or didn't make and especially because i was thrown some really really uh horrendous um curveballs in my personal life and that's you know and how I dealt with every, every single one of them and how I came out the other end and what I learned from it and how I dealt with it that's what I'm here to celebrate today and that's what I want you to celebrate I don't want you to just celebrate the financial achievements I want you to celebrate those times when you rose to the challenge and you did something which is beyond um, that you ever thought was possible for you. I mean, I want to share a few of them with yourselves now. One of the first ones that happened to me, uh, and that was for me physically, and that was in the end of March, beginning of April, or be end of March, I was involved in a really horrific accident. And that too in a foreign country, it was in Turkey. And uh, to the point where it was a freak accident on a buggy and no one could could have predicted it it was so you know like people have fall off quad bikes but to have such a horrific accident in a buggy it's unheard of and um you know um i mean long story short it's not worth discussing about the ins and outs and how it could have been prevented it wasn't it was meant to be and it was and i remember thinking at one point uh, i've lost my knee uh i literally thought i've lost both my knees at one point but I, you know, it, the the accident was so severe that I, I went unconscious because the metal thing had dug into my knee. And, um, but what I took away from there was the strength I showed. I didn't know how, what I was doing, what was I was saying half the time. I just saw that my son was driving and he blamed himself and he was feeling really guilty. So when I did come around and that was for, for coming in and out of consciousness, like I was, you know, when I was coming in, I was smiling. And my cousin was there with me and she said, she she spoke about this during Christmas actually when I went to see her up north. And she said, I can't believe how the way you reacted. And, you know, there, you were in, there was so much blood and your skin literally was falling out. My, you could see my whole, the whole of my left knee was exposed. Yet, you know, you, you kept looking at um, your son and you kept saying, oh, mommy's okay. Mommy's fine. It doesn't pain. It's not hurtful. This doesn't hurt much. It doesn't hurt much. And even though you were going in and out of consciousness and that, that was the case now I didn't do this for any 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 particular reason to to get Nate and say how brave I am how amazing I'm thinking trying to be brave was the last thing on my mind however what I did want was my son to be be you know okay with the idea that mommy's gonna be fine and it's not too painful and it's okay it's okay and bearing in mind this is a poor um you know the poor child was barely was barely eleven at the time. I didn't want him to grow up with the guilt that it was his fault, and somehow he hurt mummy, and mummy ended up in hospital. And you know, God forbid anything severe had happened to my leg. I didn't want him to take responsible personal responsibility for it. And this is the reason why I was there, and it got me thinking. As parents how much we endure and how much we you know how much we do subconsciously and sometimes consciously for our children to make sure their lives are happy and healthy yet we are always co constantly you know second guessing ourselves. you know I'm a terrible mom I'm an awful mom you know what I get how else can I improve and we I, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one as mothers you know especially working mothers we're always thinking okay am I not spending enough time with my kids am I taking time away and you feel guilty about it and the the mom guilt is uh, when you work it's always there and I work from home I work around my children's schedule and yet still I feel this way that at times I you know I'm not giving my children the kind of time that I would like to give them but it's 
it's um it's you know you have to have a balance yet when i look back at that moment i'm extremely proud of how i dealt with it not for the fact that i you know i didn't cry and i showed brave and i was brave or ever but it was how i you know showed my son the mom is okay and doesn't matter what happens god takes care of you and whatever i in my the way i dealt with a situation the way i behaved and how i overcame everything and then i was in a wheelchair you know mind you i was in a wheelchair um after that i had 20 stitches on my left knee my whole knee was just in a really dire you know state and i was in a wheelchair and i you know my daughter raised to the occasion and she she you know pushed me around in my wheelchair and um held me when we went to the to the airport when we came back to london but my kids rose to the challenge and they, they really supported me and i you know led by example and i was i'm extremely proud of that so that's one of my biggest achievements from 2022 now does that have a monetary uh, name a tag to it hell no absolutely not but it's one of my biggest achievements and it also showed me the strength of my character as something that's going to go on my you know my list of achievements that, that i was able to do this get through it and make sure that it, you know my kids had a really strong example that's one of my major achievements so think about your life you know what have you just sort of done in, of the last year which you can see as a great personal achievement leave the money side to you know for one minute and yes i know we're you know we we talk about money all the time i'm a money i'm a money person as my cousin keeps reminding me but i want you to really value who you are who you're becoming in the process because remember i keep talking about relying on god or universal energy whatever you know whatever name to give to universal energy for me that's allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i i i'm completely dependent on universal energy on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I rely on God for everything and for guidance and for help. And I'm I'm becoming the kind of person that I'm proud of. And so this one instant was where I'm extremely proud of myself. And I'm extremely proud of how my children supported me and what dealt with it as well. The whole instant. And so this is one of my biggest achievements. I want you to really think about it and really you know i know if you're going through hard times and i think some a lot of people were going through hard times 2022 had that kind of energy actually it was a very challenging year for a lot of people that i knew so if you're going through challenging times and you've looked at 2022 and you thought well you know what it didn't do much for me i didn't achieve much i want you to really be honest with yourself and say okay what happened and how did i deal with it and how can i you know what did i learn from it and what about that incident makes me feel proud of myself. I promise you there's at least one or two situations when you behaved in a manner which surprised even you. And you can now be proud of yourself and say like, you know, I did that. I'm so proud of the person and the way this person dealt with that situation. You need to be proud of you. You need to celebrate your behavior, your achievements, not just talk back at yourself in how you should have behaved, but also congratulate yourself in terms of how you did behave in certain situations. Then as but my biggest one from that is even though that happened, my faith in divine energy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't falter. I I constantly thanked God. I was constantly grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that my you know I was injured, my son wasn't. And every step of the way, every every challenge that presented itself, um God, God divine energy found a solution for me. And so we, in the end, we ended up being at home. We did get home safely. And my brother was able to come and pick me up from the airport and and so forth. So God made things happen in the most amazing divine way possible. Yes, challenge presented itself, but God also find a way out. And that's one of, one of the basic things about 2022. Now, the next thing, again, is going to be a personal thing is where on one hand, it was just... Like it was a life, death, life and death matter for my son. We, you know, we ended up in A and E, and then he had an emergency operation. Now, then to that too, I could have been, why my son and why this and so forth. Instead, throughout, from the moment we ended up in hospital, and I knew something. I intuitively, as a mum, you knew, you know, so I knew something serious was, you know, going on. You know, the fact that we're in the hospital and the energies over here is just under so much stress is ridiculous. Anyhow, um, you know, we, you know, 
my son was seen to and the operation took place and he survived and he did really, really well. And he's, you know, you couldn't even tell that he had an operation. He's a healthy, happy, normal boy. Again, throughout that entire time, I was celebrating, you know, God's help. I was thanking him in advance. So from the moment I found out that he was going to have this operation, I started thanking Divine Sanjee. Thank you for making him healthy. Thank you for, you know, making the operation go smoothly. Thank you for this and thank you for that. Because I expected God to help me and God did. God came through. And my son, mashallah, is healthy and he's back to normal playing football and, you know, being his normal boyish self that he is. Again, both the fact that I dealt with that incident in the way that I did and uh, the fact that my faith in divine energy did not falter. I celebrated. Now, before you start thinking, girls toting her own horn and saying how wonderful she is, let me tell you about the third incident, which did break me completely. And that would be with my daughter. So 2022 closed with us back in the a &E, um, in the middle of December, just after the school closed, and uh, again, it was a life and death matter. And she too was taken into the A&E. And from then onwards, um, you know, we, we was in the hospital for a few days. And she eventually came home and they're still looking at what's going on with her. Thank God it's no longer a life and death matter. She's, um, you know, she's, she's getting better. Um, but it's not what they thought it was. Um, so she's, you know, she's doing well. Again, it's that at that moment I did falter. Uh, I think with everything else, it was okay. With my son too, I was in expectation mode. I did really well, but when it came to my daughter, I you know I I, I could have behaved better. Absolutely, I could have. I could have. Uh, I my faith and everything around me shattered for for a few literally a few hours to the point where my brother had to step in and he was there to support my daughter and I had to take time out and just be by myself to, you know, to control my emotions. I could not be the parent that she needed me to be because I had to control myself and it was difficult. And I'm very, very grateful to my brother because he did step in. He came and he was there with her um, in the hospital and I took time out and I just went out and I had, I just cried out and I prayed to Allah subhanahu wa and I'm very angry as well, but I was able to take the time out. Now, on one hand, I fell short of my previous high standard and, you know, high expectation mode and praying to God and believing in God and, and having a strong faith. Here, my faith was really, really tested. And I fell far below my personal standards, my personal expectation of myself. Yet, at the same time, it showed to me, so when I look upon this, you know, when I look upon that moment, I'm not criticizing myself. I'm not saying, well, cool, you know, you can't even do this. You, you know, you say you rely on God and then how can you, you know, behave this way? I'm not going to sit there and judge myself. I'm not going to sit there and criticize myself. Why? Because I deserve some, I, I and you too, we are humans. We are having this human experience. Yes, we are spiritual beings. And yes, we are trying to connect with our God and the universal energy and trying to build our lives up. But we are having these human experiences. And there are going to be moments when we're going to fall short of that high standard we set for ourselves. And we're going to go into this really egotistical human mode. And we're going to have a breakdown. We're going to have a meltdown right? And when you do that, give yourself space to do that. So it's funny, when I look upon that moment, I I'm, I was I was really happy that I've matured enough that instead of thinking, oh my God, I behaved so badly and whatever, of course, you know, once that moment was over I, and I was able to get back into being me, I pray to God and I asked for God's forgiveness in you know in Islam we for istighfar so astaghfar I did a lot of astaghfar I asked for a lot of forgiveness from God in terms of you know for all the things I said um but the point being even though my behavior wasn't to what I would have you know how it was in the previous times it fell short it still did not you know it was still okay with me I gave myself permission to 
you know, have some time out, to have the tantrum, to behave in that way. And then to love myself enough to come back on track and to start behaving like a mother the way I should like, expect myself to be. And then I was there for my daughter and I was able to talk to the doctors and I was able to do everything that I needed to do as a mother. But at the same time, it gave myself the space to be normal, to be human, to hurt, to go through the pain, to deal with the trauma and to know that, yes, when I, when as a parent, when you see your children go through such traumas and uh, such pains, it, 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 it literally kills a, a part of you inside too. So I needed that time to deal with that pain and that trauma. And I, I, I took some time out, which I hadn't previously, but then I did. And also the fact that my brother was, you know, bless him, he was amazing and he was there to be, to be able to step in when I wasn't there. So he was, able, he's very close to my daughter. So, you know, he, he's a favorite uncle. He's our only uncle. Um, he's, a, you know, so, so she, he was able to be there for us. I know she was taken care of. She was not alone. She was taken care of by someone who loved her dearly. So I had the space and time to be me, to, to go through my, you know, my emotions and my traumas. Anyway, the point being that I'm, I celebrated, this was the, the opposite of the other. So, you know, this is where I wasn't, uh, you know, behaving in, in a, this amazing way that I had in the previous times. But I still am proud of myself that I gave myself the time to, to look after the human version of me, the human side of me, because that's still there. I am not a saint. I am going through these human experiences like you are. I'm going through the pain that you are. And I have moments of doubt like you do. My faith is very, very strong and I keep it strong. But there are moments when it does falter. And that's the moments when I ask God for help. Your journey, on your journey to becoming wealthy, you're going to have these moments of doubt. You're going to have these moments when you're going to have these meltdowns. You're going to have these ups and downs. You're going to have such strong um, curveballs thrown at you that you're going to think, is it worth it? But this is that time when you need, when you know you need to understand that you're being tested. This is the time when you have to stay strong. You have to remain loyal to you, you as a person, not anyone else, not your family members, nobody else, but to you yourself, who you are. Get to know you. Allow yourself to breathe. Allow yourself to grieve. Allow yourself to be normal and to experience human emotions. You are not a robot. You are not here to go from A to Z and not experience any heartache and, and not see any feeling emotions. You are here to experience this whole, you know, whole spectrum of emotions. And in that process, you're going to have moments when you are going to have meltdowns and you're going to have moments when you are amazingly, you're behaving amazingly. Both versions of, of that person is you. You need to accept that part, the, the, that human side of you. So, I, you know, I've shared very, very vulnerable podcasts as, as the opening podcast for 2023 for this reason that I want you to look at your life and see in, in the past year and what have you achieved personally in your private life? As a person, how have you grown? Where did you, how did you behave at such, some, you know, challenging times? And if it was, if it was not about uh, to your level of standards that you set for yourself, then what, what leeway did you give yourself? How did you allow yourself to grow from it? How did you allow yourself to learn from it? And what did you learn from it? And what are you, what lessons are you taking from 2022 into 2023 to develop and grow as a person? This is the question that you have to ask yourself. There are many, many people out there who go from one year to the other without any growth. And I see that a lot, especially, you know, in the online space, you know, these, these bro bro marketing people. And all they're concerned about is how much money they've made. And yeah, if you focus only on money, you will make money. But what I want you to focus on in this as, as part of my community, as this community is, what can you learn and how can you grow and how can you help those around you from your learn from your learning from your growth and how can you have an amazing abundant life not just financially but in all areas of your life and that cannot happen unless you are willing to grow so i hope you enjoyed today's podcast and i hope you enjoyed 
and took some heed from what I said. And I, I really do hope that you will spend some time alone and do some introspection in your life and how 2022 moved you, changed you, allowed you to grow and celebrate the good, the bad and the ugly all together because everything combined is making who you are. Remember, everything happens for you, not to you. Well, on that note, I'm going to take leave. I will see you next time. Until the next time we meet, this is Gore Khan signing off. Take care and bye for now.